Hello, everyone, and welcome to the I Didn't Know ClearPoint Could Do That webinar series. Today, we're going to be introducing the newest Robin to your Batman, aka ClearPoint 10.5. So, here are your smiling hosts. I'm Catherine. And I'm Andy. And just as a few housekeeping announcements, we will be recording this session and we'll make it available within a week. The webinar will last about 25 minutes with time for questions at the end. So if you have questions, submit them to support at clearpointstrategy.com. Any that we don't get to at the end, we'll follow up with by email. So on our last installment, we covered creating custom dashboards and landing pages in ClearPoint. And you can find that recording on the ClearPoint Live Vimeo channel, on our blog, and in our support center. Just search for webinar. And today, we're focusing on five can't-miss features of ClearPoint 10. We'll be showing you some improved navigation and customization features, some changes to our measure detail pages. We'll show you how to manage your data loader packages right from within ClearPoint. Uh, we have a new improvement to our summary reports, and we'll be introducing the brand new ClearPoint measure library. That's right, we're saving the best for last. And with that, let's dive right in. So we are breaking with tradition today to explore the sights and sounds of Metropolis. Okay, so for those of you who are new to ClearPoint and maybe not very familiar with all of its capabilities, we've actually added an awesome new set of tours to help you get up and running. To access these tours, just click on the profile icon in the upper right hand corner of the page and go down to where it says ClearPoint tours. Clicking this will open a new window where users can select one of five tours to help them get started. These are a great resource for someone just getting started with ClearPoint. Yeah, definitely. Plus, if you're an admin, this is something you could point your new users to in order to help them get up and running. So once you pick a tour, I'm gonna go ahead and grab Manage Reports. You can move through it using the Next button. At any point, you can click the exit button to exit the tour. Most of them take just a couple of minutes to complete. Another feature we suggest new users check out is our tooltips feature, which can also be activated from the profile icon. To turn it on, just click show tooltips. Now, whenever you hover over any icon in the top navigation or from the control panel, a little box will tell you what the icon or button does. For example, hovering over home tells you what clicking on it does and how you could change that. But can I still use these tooltips if je parle français or avo espanol? <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, so ClearPoint 10.5 has been translated into five more languages. Uh, to pick another language, just edit your profile in the upper right hand corner. And from within there, you'll see a language drop down. So we're going to do the rest of the webinar in Portuguese, right, Andy? <laughs> uh, maybe next time. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick with English. Uh, now users all around the globe can customize their accounts to whatever their preferred language is. Yeah, and speaking of account customization. Yes, as promised, you can now change the background colors of your account. Uh, to make these changes, just go to System Settings and then click on Admin Options, and then click on the Custom Styles tab uh, over here on the left. Catherine is our in-house hexadecimal expert, so I'm going to recruit her to help me come up with some cool colors for our background. So first, we see the content background color. Catherine, uh, what is your favorite light shade of blue that we could use for our background? My favorite light blue is D1E. 2FC. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, and what about our navigation bar color? Let's do a dark blue, 003, 08F. Perfect. And what about the content border color? We'll choose a complementary orange, FFD, 215. My favorite. <laughs> Okay, so now when we click Save, everything will update. Looks great. Yeah, so what we see here um, in this main window, we see the 
uh, background color. This is showing us our light blue in the top navigation. Up here, we see the, uh, the dark blue. And then on this line here, we can see our content uh, borderline, which is orange. Yes, so you can get ClearPoint to match your organizational branding, which is what we've done here. So let's take a closer look now at some improvements we've made to our measure detail pages. And we'll click over to our trusty revenue measure. And you've always been able to export your data tables from your measure page to export the entire page to PDF. But in ClearPoint 10.5, we're expanding your export options a little more. So looking at these two revenue and variance charts, you'll see that there's a hamburger button now in the top right corner. And clicking on this, uh, I'll see that I have the option to export to PNG, JPEG, PDF, or SVG image file format. Um, and we added this option so that you'd have an easier way to distribute charts of images, whether it's just for pasting into an email or into a written document or presentation. Yeah, so now you can just grab the chart from here without having to go through the steps of exporting a dashboard to PowerPoint and then copying your chart and pasting, et cetera. It's much faster. Yes, exactly. Great, so what else have we changed here? Uh, let's scroll down to our data table. Uh, so you'll see that we have a lot of data, data here, um, and 10.5 incorporates some features into the data table that took your feedback really heavily into consideration. Um, so here we have a lengthy amount of data, a ton of series. Some of our series have really long names. So if we scroll over here, uh, right off the bat, you'll see that our police department revenue, fire department revenue, et cetera, those entire measure names are showing. Um, so that text is going to wrap in the series header so that you can see the whole name of the series. Now we'll scroll over to the right to continue viewing the rest of our series. And you'll see that that status bar stays completely static. Yeah, so we heard your request for this, and this is going to save everyone a lot of time when you're looking at your data, so you don't have to scroll back and forth. Uh, even if you're looking at a number over on the far right side of the data table, you still have the period and status of the, of the measure uh, right there uh, on the left side. Exactly. So uh, another thing we can do here is to scroll down to view more recent months of data and check out that top header, it's not moving at all. So no matter where you are in your data table, you always have a clear view of the full series name and of the measure status and period. Yeah, if you're not seeing any scrolling in your data tables, uh, there's an easy way for administrators to change this setting across your accounts. Right, so here's how you'd set that up. Uh, we'll go to System Settings, Admin Options, and then this one's gonna be under Organization and Security. When I click into this window, I'll see that I have the option to set a maximum number of rows to show in the measure data tables. I've set mine to 12, and if you set it to zero, that's gonna show all the rows that you have. No scrolling. So you might be wondering whether this feature is going to affect your Excel or your PDF exports, but don't worry, they'll still show all the rows in the data table, same as always. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so speaking of data tables, I'd now like to transition to everyone's favorite tool for getting data into those tables, the data loader. So we've added a new menu inside of ClearPoint for administrators, uh, where administrators can view and manage any existing data packages within their account. But first, um, because some of our viewers are new, I would like to give the quick five minute demo of the data loader so that um, anyone who's unfamiliar with the tool can get up to speed. So the data loader is a separate tool that ClearPoint users can install on their own computers. The data loader uses, or the, the data loader allows users to map data sources such as Excel, CSV, or SQL to their measures in ClearPoint. From there, data can be uploaded manually or by setting set schedules. Uh, the installation package can be acquired by emailing us at support at clearpointstrategy.com, and then from there, it takes only five minutes to install. So once you open the tool, a user will enter their ClearPoint username and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And this will take us to the data packages screen. So to create a package, a user specifies which file they want to pull data from, which Catherine has done here. 
and then you can map it out within the data loader. Now, the file format is really important, so I'm going to take a look at that really quickly here. Regardless of whether you're using Excel, CSV, or SQL, the format needs to look the same, um, which I'll go through now. Uh, in column A, uh, you need to have a list of all the period names or dates that you're mapping data to. Uh, and then in columns B, C, et cetera, and beyond, uh, you can have each of the series that you're mapping to. Um, every column of data in this spreadsheet will be available to us for mapping inside the data loader, and then you can have as many as you want uh, as data loader packages can be mapped to as many measures as you want. Uh, if we click ahead to the mapping definition screen in the data loader, you can map the columns of data from your spreadsheet to specific series in ClearPoint. So first, you select the scorecard you want to map to. From there, you select the measure. And finally, which series you want to map to. When ready, click Next. And this will take you to the preview data screen. This is going to show you what would happen if you were to upload the data. We haven't actually uploaded it yet, but we'll get to that shortly. So click Next to go to the final setup screen. Uh, and this is where you can create schedules. Uh, this is something that I mentioned before. It's Great feature for automating your uploading. Um, to do so, all you need to do is uh, click on the name and give it a name, uh, and then you can set schedules. So you can pick daily, weekly, or monthly. Uh, you can pick the time of day, when it should start, uh, the frequency, uh, pretty much anything is possible. Yeah, so one important thing to note here is that your computer has to be turned on for those schedules to run. Right. Um, and this is also important, your data loader service must have access to the folder where the file lives. Yeah, and if you're unsure of how to do this, we have a help article that walks you through it. Um, and if you don't have the permissions to uh, make that change on your computer, that's something your IT team should be able to help set up in just a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. So if we click Finish, this will take us back to the home page of the data loader. And to run this package, all we need to do is click this green arrow. But before I do so, uh, I'd like to go and look at the measure detail page so we can see these updates in action. So if we go back over to ClearPoint, um, I was mapping to my airport scorecard, to my revenue measure. Okay, so we can see from this data table that we are missing data for January, February, and March. Um, and that it hasn't been added to the data or to the chart yet either. So I'm going to go ahead and return to the data loader and tell it to upload. So the data uploads almost immediately. It'll let us know, and then it'll also send us an email letting us know that the upload was successful. So if I refresh on this page, We can see that data was added to the table uh, for January, February, and March, and that it was added to the chart too. Any calculations or evaluations in your count will be immediately impacted once you make this upload. So everything is really just instantaneous. Awesome. And so for those of you that were unfamiliar, that's the gist of the, uh, of the data loader as you would have it installed on your computer. Um, but as promised, I wanted to touch on the functionality that we've actually added inside of ClearPoint. So if we go over to System Settings under Admin Options, the last tile in the bottom right-hand corner is called Data Loader. If we click on that, a new window will appear, and this is going to show you all of the packages that exist in your account. From here, you can delete, duplicate, edit, or run a package. Things that are available for editing include the name, the machine or computer ID, uh, the package owner, which you can change from here, 
Uh, you can see the, the file path or the file name, as well as any schedules that are associated with this package. So one option that exists within ClearPoint that's pretty awesome is the ability to run that package um, immediately. Um, and to do so, uh, all you need to do is click that data loader or the rocket ship button over here. It's the blue button. Uh, and doing so will queue that package for uploading sometime in the next five minutes. Yeah, and again, note here that your background service for the data loader must have access for this method of uploading to work. Right, right. So if that method isn't working, um, that's probably going to be what you would want to check. So as I said before, um, before that, we have a help article, and uh, be sure to check that out if you're wondering how to give permission. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the data loader inside of ClearPoint 10. Um, but there is one other feature that I wanted to go over before I handed it over to Catherine. So up next is sortable summary reports. Um, if I nav navigate to one of those reports in the top navigation and go to Owners and Analysis, we can see uh, that the layout is by default following whatever my summary report uses in ClearPoint. So if I click Owner, that is going to change the order uh, and sort it alphanumerically based on the owner. If I click it again, it'll sort it um, ascending. Yeah, so this is a great way to really easily organize your reports. Um, and another cool usage of this feature would be to sort something like analysis and recommendations so that you can see right off the bat which measures still need analysis for the period that you're viewing. Yeah, exactly. That's a great, great point, Catherine. Great. So I think we've covered everything, right, Andy? We haven't added a completely new section to ClearPoint or anything. Yeah, exactly. Time to sign off and go home, right? <laughs> right. Don't worry. Uh, we know you're on the edge of your seats, and there's no way we'd let you continue your day without experiencing the new ClearPoint measure library. So this option is currently available and visible to administrators only, which is why it's here under system settings. And here we have the measures library. We will come back to this page, but first I wanna use this blue toggle to click over and show you our contributing organizations. So on this page, you can see a list of all the cities that are adding to this wealth of information. Uh, for each organization, you can see the population, median income, size of the city, and even take a look into their leadership structure. Uh, this information is gonna help you guide uh, which contributing organization's measures you might wanna look at in particular. So if I didn't say so already, the measures library is a place where organizations can see and use the measures and KPIs other cities are tracking to see what charts they have set up to do so and what measures, or excuse me, what series they're using. And then cities can even contribute their own measures. So we'll walk you through all of that today. So not only that, but you, you'll also know who to contact and how to contact them about questions you might have as you go around uh, the library and look at different measures. Yes, you have contact information available for every contributing organization here. So now let's toggle back over to take a look at the measures. And we can see a few things about all the measures available here right off the bat. So we can see the name of the measure, uh, the organization that contributed it. Each measure has at least one category tag. And then you can also see how recently the measure was added to the library. So what can you do with these? They're great to look at, but what can we do? For starters, uh, let's search for a measure here. Uh, we can go ahead and click the preview measure icon to take a look at the data. So here we can see the charts, the series and data values, um, and all of the data types that the city of Germantown is using to track the satisfaction of their citizens with police services. Now once we've previewed this measure, if we want to go ahead and add it to our account, I click on add to scorecard. And then from here, I can make any adjustments I want to the name, choose the destination scorecard. I'll need to select a reporting frequency so that it will go well with the rest of the measures I'm tracking. And then I can even link it to an objective in my account right from here. So I'll click on add to scorecard again. 
And that's going to add the measure as a blank template to my account. And we'll go back to that. Uh, but let's just talk about the number icons that just appear here. So the one on the left indicates the number of accounts using this measure, AKA how likely it is to be voted strategic planning prom queen. Mm -hmm. And the number on the right is going to indicate the number of times that you've linked this measure to your own account. In case, for example, you've decided it's the best thing since sliced bread and no scorecard can go without it. So keep in mind, this number here on the right is going to be not only the number of times you've added the new measure templates linked to the library, but you can also count the number of times you've linked the measure to existing measures. So that's right, that latter option is a possibility if you don't want to add an entirely new measure to your account, but simply want to link the data in a library measure to an existing measure, that's easy to do. Uh, to do so, we can go ahead and click on the link icon. And you would link to the existing measure just like you would add any other link in ClearPoint. So I can type in the name if I know it off the top of my head, or I can click on add link to search by scorecard and select a measure name. So I'm going to link that to the percent of citizens who feel extremely safe. So then I'll click on add link. And here from this link window, I can easily go and view the linked measures in my account. So I've been taken to this page in a new tab. And here we see our blank measure template. Um, and again, having that template set means that you have the same chart configuration and the same series set up as that original library measure so that you can hit the ground running and tracking your new measure. And not only do you have this template measure created, but you can always check in on the linked measure uh, right from the edit measure window. So if Catherine clicks edit and then goes down to the library measure tab, this will show you the info from the original measure and any data that's been updated since you added it to your account. So this is going to update in real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's easy to keep track of any new changes to that measure. Um, and for those of you who are exploring the measures library uh, because you're trying to figure out what KPIs your organization should be tracking, we've got a few different ways that you can browse and search for measures. So let's head back into the measures library. And we'll start with sorting. So here you have a sort measure library drop down at the bottom of your screen with several options, ascending and descending of how you want to view the measures. Uh, let's go ahead and sort by the descending created date. And that's going to show you the most recently added measures in order. Yeah, and this is great for checking in on new measures that have been added to the library since you last visited. We have a lot of uh, organizations contributing, um, so check back frequently. Exactly. Um, and then if you're looking for a specific term within the measure title, uh, you can search that way as well. In the search measure library bar, I'm just going to type in my search term, water. And this is going to show me all water-related measures. And as I pointed out earlier, uh, each measure has at least one tag or category associated with it, so that the measures are organized into a finite set of defined categories. Um, so another way that you can search for a particular measure is by category. For example, under filter by category or keyword, I'm going to type in public works. Select that from my dropdown. And this is going to filter to all water-related measures in the public works and utilities category. So lastly, as I pointed out, uh, under each of these measures, you can see which member organization contributed them, which brings us to another search mechanism. Uh, you can simply select a measure organization in the filter by contributor uh, box here. So let's see what Fort Collins is up to. And here you can see that this is a really easy way to refine the message in your search. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and some of you out there might now be wondering how you could go about adding your own measures to the library. Um, and that's definitely something we want you to do. So uh, please reach out if you're interested. Exactly. So the more organizations that add information to the measure library, the more valuable it will be as a whole. Uh, to contribute a measure is very much like adding an element to ClearPoint. We'll click the plus icon in the top right corner. And then we can either type the measure name or select a scorecard and source measure right from our dropdown. When I'm ready, I'll click Next. 
And so this screen is going to show me all of the information about the measure. But don't worry, only the charts, data table, and series are going to be displayed in the library. The rest of the fields are there so that you could choose one to display as a description of your measure. And this is optional. You could al always just type in a description manually on the next tab. This might save you some time. So when we're satisfied with how this looks, we'll click Next and just iron out some final steps. So the first one will be to solidify your name. We really would recommend that you remove any specific code or locations that are specific to your organization from this measure name so that it's a generic title that anyone could use. Next comes agreeing to the terms. And this is just to acknowledge that other member library, measure library member organizations will be able to view the data. After that, we'll select at least one tag for our measure. So I would say that employee wage falls under finances and human resources here. And then we'll identify who should be contacted in case other member organizations have questions. So I'll take responsibility for that one. When we're done, we can click Save and search for the name to see our measure in the list. Thanks. Yeah, and one thing to note, just an FYI, when you change the name of the measure as you add it to the measure library, that isn't going to change it in your account. It's just going to change it as it appears in the library. Good point. So yeah, the li measure library is something uh, that is going to continue to develop and grow. Uh, we're all really excited about it, and we're definitely excited to hear your feedback as well. Absolutely. Um, so as far as today, we are almost to the end of our time, and we want to be sure to leave time to answer your burning questions. Uh, so here's one, Andy. Uh, when is ClearPoint 10.5 going to be available? Yeah, so the official release date uh, is going to be next week on February 15th. Uh, there are some works in progress for ClearPoint 10.5 that you will already see live in your account. Uh, however, you'll notice, especially in the measure library, that we are still putting some finishing touches on ClearPoint 10.5 for the official release. Yes. Um, and I see another one here, which is, I don't see the measure library. How do I get access to it in my account? Good question. Um, so first, as we mentioned, it's only for administrators at this point. If you are an administrator and you'd like to access the library, feel free to reach out to us at support at clearpointstrategy.com and we'll get you set up. And we'll answer really fast too. <laughs> um, here's one more. Uh, this looks like it. This one's from our friend Richard. Uh, what about the history menu you talked about in the release notes? Uh, yes, sorry. Um, thanks for pointing that out. So a feature that many of you are probably uh, noticing by now uh, is called the history menu, and it's located down here in the lower left-hand corner of the window. If you hover over this icon, it will show you the last 10 pages that you visited in ClearPoint. I love this feature. It's a really great way to quickly navigate around your account and get back to the pages that you recently visited. Yeah, definitely. Great, so that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the I Didn't Know ClearPoint Could Do That webinar, and we'll see you next time. Happy reporting. Bye.